Welcome back to the channel. In part one of this review for the Metal Belt Strike L Strike Gundam, I'll be going over the articulation and its accessories along. Now, as for the articulation for the head, it can rotate just about 45 degrees before it hit the side. From the the tip of the chin. So it can go more than 45 degrees. And for the elbows, it can swing, it can rotate 360. The arms can swing up all the way up like this. And for this version of the strike, it comes with a special gimmick, such as the panel of the shoulder can open. Same thing for this side. As for the arms, it's what you expect. Double, double jointed elbows. You can go all the way up this, like this. And for the side skirt, you can go all the way up here. Front skirt, back skirt, everything are independent of each other. So that will really help with the articulation too. The legs can go all the way up about 80 degrees, which kind of surprisingly, I was expecting a little bit more, but not gonna force it. As for the bend, which is kind of the, what it's famous for, if at the back skirt, it can go about almost 180. In mind, this is a metal belt, so the internal frame is die cast, which kind of helps if you want to move it a lot, do a lot of poses, your power will stay intact. And the weight on the feet will probably keep the center balance low, so it'll be helping with the posability options. Oh, forgot to take out this. And it's for the feet. You got the armor that swings up and down. Note the detail here. The feet is on a little board, uh, joint here, but they cannot mo move that much. And also mention that the there's a gimmick in the back of the leg. You can move a little bit high up. Not sure what this is. I guess it's maybe like a heat dissipation option. Just like the shoulder part over here, but I'm not sure. And there's another gimmick for the back. I think I might have shown this in the unboxing video. But normally you have the thruster for the basic strike mode. And it, you, if you pull it down, you will refill the hole. If you rather have the strike by itself, you will have the thruster and therefore hiding the hole, which I think is a very cool gimmick. The waist section can rotate a little bit. The joints are really tight because it's die cast and also because it's new. But I'm sure if you exercise caution, you can do a lot of it yourself. The waist section, as far as I can tell, you can only rotate this much. Like so, about 45 degrees. The shoulder, I forgot to mention, can lift up, which is one of the common gimmicks for almost all version of the strikes for attachments, and we'll explore that later on. The hands are on the ball joint can go 360 and you can actually replace them with four pairs of hands. We gotta move this with the camera. So you get when you first unbox the figure you get the close fits. 
like this. A pair of close fists. Everything they give you is in a pair of twos. So let's zoom in just a little bit. Which again is probably not good for anything other than just posing by itself without any any kind of accessories. Same thing as I switch to the open hands. It's just for posing. It's not gonna do any good when holding any accessories. And you got a pair of trigger finger hands to hold a beam rifle. Just in case you want it to be left-handed, you also got that option. Everything comes in pairs again. You got a pair of beam saber hands as well. I'm sure there are also other, when other accessories come out, you're going to be able to use this for other options too. But for now, um, just for the L-Strike alone, the only thing I can find is the beam saber because the beam rifle, as I'm going to show later on, is going to be using by the trigger finger hands that I showed earlier. And now a pair of grabbing hands. The instruction manual doesn't really show the usage of this, but you can try. To explore yourself. Now this is all in one piece. The everyone who has a metal bit would know. It's unlike the the figure, which comes in two piece. The the common three one one hands, which the thumb is one piece, the index finger one piece, and then the rest of the three three fingers in one piece. You can actually detach um, to change it because they are usually only give you one of those covers, so it's, it's a pain to having to switch all the time. But in here they give you five pairs of hands and you don't have to do anything about it. It's intact, it's all in, it's, this is all in one piece just like all the other pairs of hands. So that, that will really keep it very intact and stable, nothing will come loose, that's great. And actually it's really really hard to change hands because of that you have to really pull. I didn't I didn't get all the way in that's why it's a little bit easier right now but as later on it's gonna be a little bit harder so I'm gonna put in the beam saber hands. I'm gonna put in actually I'm gonna do both I'm gonna do do the trigger finger hands on the right hand. Oh, I gotta get in it's really hard to get in on camera. Yeah, there. I'm gonna do the beam saber hands on the left hand. Come on, get in. Okay. Now that's about it for the articulation. There's a little bit of app crunch. Unfortunately, the cockpit does not open, which I think I wish it should, but I can't understand why because the inner frame is completely die cast. So having a, a cockpit is going to compromise some of that die cast sturdiness, <laughs> if that's a word, uh, more like integrity of the frame, more like it. So unfortunately, even though you can see a detail here that has a latch, this does not open. You can even see that this, if I go get closer, you can see there's almost like it's detached over here. It makes you think that you can open, but I pretty much checked it. You cannot. There's no, there's no hatch gimmick in this one, unfortunately. So on to the accessories. You got the usual Armor Snyder on both side squats, fold it, and you can use the beam saber hands to also hold this Armor Snyder. Like so, you have all sorts of pose option. But, well, let's face it, you're probably not going to be using these that much. You're probably just going to store it and never take them, never take them out. Let's put it back in. 
It's still a little bit tricky to get into the white position, but with some practice, you can you can do it. Okay, focus. So on to the other accessories, of course. You got the beam rifle. Again, I'll show that in the unboxing, but I'll show it again. One of the cool gimmicks is that you can actually store it on the side by pulling up this latch. It'll get it closer. This latch was up, and then if you pull it down, you'll be able to store the beam rifle because of from the hole up here. Likewise, if you want to do it on the left hand side because you're a left left handed person, you can also do it like so. But for me I'm probably trying to keep it as accurate as the anime which I think Kiwa is actually a white handed person. He he holds his rifle on the white hand as the box art will show. And of course, you can also store it on the back skirt. Pretty steady. Which is one of the common selling points of a metal belt because you expect the sturdiness of it. You're not like a model kit where everything will fall loose on you if you manhandle it. So now to get to hold the weapon in exchange for stableness, you have to uh, fight the hands a little bit to get anything in. But you cannot argue with the end result because after you get it in, it's not gonna come out easily. So I'm gonna do this off camera so I'll be right back. So after flickering it for about a minute, this is how it looks like. She's holding it pretty sturdy. And you can do all sorts of posts on it. Because the the gun is not really die cast, it's pretty light so it's have no no difficulty to be handled like this. You will never fall, you will never drop the gun the arm will ne never sink down because because of gravity. The die cast frame is more than enough to handle it. So other poses they can do, you can hold the gun with both hands. Um, I'm not gonna bother with it because um, this is not the pose that I think the majority of people is gonna do anyway, but. If you want, you could easily hold it with two hands, just get the handle ball in there, then there you go. Getting him to stand is easy, no matter what pose you do, because of the die cast weight to it. And most of the weight is actually on the legs, the legs is almost completely die cast, not just the frame, but seems the armor piece is also die cast, so the center of balance is actually lower. Therefore, it's, it's, hard, it's not that hard to balance him. Now his other accessory is trusty shield from the Air Striker pack. You got the attachment point here. You have to attach this when you first open the box. This will just fall off as a small piece, but you just Hold this on, on the ball joint here, so you can rotate any way you want. And of course, the handle also slides up and down. The side grass is there's a piece of plastic over here, but there's nothing you can do. You cannot open it or close it. Unlike, I think the perfect way does that. You can be able to do that, but in here it's a, it's a fix. This is what it looks like. Only thing you can do is, is attach it to the arm on either side. Let's see how to do this. So 
So for in, just nice, like that. So you can keep it like this, have the back facing with that, but back has a, a lot of details too. And yeah, the, the shield is not die cast, it's plastic, but it's hot plastic, so. So you can rotate the shield. You can mess around with it. You can try to This this is not we really not needed to have the hand holding the, the ball, but you could do it if you want it to look cool. But you'll never drop the shield as the the attachment is so tight. And so I made a mistake actually. I gotta attach it like sideways. I, I attached it like this before. We're supposed to attach it like this. Yeah, it will help to really pay attention to the instruction manual. I read it once and then I forget about it. So if you do that, you can do all sorts of different options, such as you want to bring the shield up like that. That looks pretty decent. And of course, not gonna forget about the L striker pack. Now before I attach them, let's go over the articulation because I actually have some. You might see in the box art that um, some of the, the thruster can fold. The wings can fold up and then can bend down. Finally, there's a, a bend that you can do like so. And notice when you bend, the thruster actually swing in, so that's a no light gimmick, if you can tell. See, it kind of goes in a little bit. So when you did all that, oh, and, and the centerpiece can do so as well, it'll look like it's fall down. The beam sabers, of course, can come out. And you can attach it with the provided two um, beam effect box, and can put it in your know, in the hand. I'm not gonna show that because that's almost very easy to imagine. Just slide it right into the hole on the hand. Okay, put it back. So you want to put him on this L striker pack, yep of course, lower his thruster, and the attachment is, it looks, little, looks like a T, it'll just go away. in. Yeah the connection part is a die cast so it'll be very sturdy, you don't have to worry about it from breaking from over time, from over overuse of that attachment. So even with the heavy backpack, it's possible to get him to stand. Although it's a little bit more tricky now. There's a little die cast, unlike the shield and the beam rifle, that there are no die cast part, the L striker pack has. So just to show you this. But nevertheless, you can still get him to stand on his own. Like so. And then if you want, of course, you can put his wings back on. Let's see if it's in the air. I just wanted to point out that there seems to be no connection point for the batteries and the attachment arms for the launcher. And like so for the sort, for the uh, Let's take it out. Yeah, that might make it easier. There are no holes for the sword mount and also the 
adjustment arm for the launcher. There's no, unlike the master grade that you can actually pull out, there's no, no gimmick on that one, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, that means there's no plan for Bandai to make this a perfect strike, I guess. But don't feel, don't feel down right now because I'm going to show you something that you might like later on, but on a different part. So with all the attached, you have the L Strike Gundam. Looks pretty awesome. Now, of course, if you want to do more poses, it comes with a stand. Oops. Not. Ah, great. Well, I can also demonstrate on just having the striker pack in the air, too. So, let's do that first. So, you could attach... First of all, it got a lot of details here, too. GAT, X105 strike, the mount number. The back has nothing since there's no LED. There is nothing. So, you could attach it like so, and then you have this piece right here, they only, they only give you one, unfortunately. Um, there are two ways to do it, let's do it without, without that. Slide into that hole right here. It's a little bit tight, but that just makes it very secure once it's in. Hmm. Yeah, it's really tight. So unfortunately, I can't really get it in, but this is not the pose I want anyway. Well, let me see if I spend more time when I can get it in. Be right back. So with a little struggle, I got it in. It's really tight once you get it in. It's a trade-off. If, it, if it's easy to get it on, that means it's not very stable usually. So if you want to pose it like this with the L Striker Pack and the Gundam Separately, you could do so, although I don't really see why. What's the point? If they got to do it like this, they should have a separate attachment here so that in the future they come with more, more packs. Um, like I think they, they already announced the gun barrel uh, attachment, gun barrel striker pack for the strike and it will be cool if you can have an attachment over here that you can display multiple packs on the back. That way it will look like you can maybe switch around, getting ready to be launched. No, that would be cool. But right now I really don't see the point of having it this way. Now, now that I spent a lot of time to get a lot of effort to getting on, let's take it back out. To get back out is a lot easier. So that's only pretty much the only purpose of having this. Oh, actually, you, I was wrong. You could actually attach the strike itself. Nope, uh, no, I was like, this is the only purpose that it's for. Now I'm gonna go over the other one. Just this uh, stand right here. This is the one that you have to use the attachment. And then the there's a hole in the clutch. 
If you just want him to stand and look cool and not worry about him falling, this is how you do it. I'm getting this back in. Yeah, I was hoping that you can have both of these together so then if you choose, so choose to have the striker pack and the strike on the stand separately detached that you can do so but it doesn't seem like you can do it. The instruction manual doesn't tell you to do so either. But as you can see it's not it's not falling. But I, I don't I don't think you're gonna be wanting to put him like that. Finally this the most important one is the biggest one. Which is the one that you want to use if you want to do some area poses. This um the stand is actually pretty awesome because it has a lot of, a lot of gimmicks. You can press the button here, you'll come out on the other side. Oops. Do it again. So in this in this mode it's locked if you have it all the way this latch here, all the way on this side. Focus. Okay, zoom in more. Yep. You'll be locked if you push it all the way on the other side. Then you'll be unlocked and you can turn. You gotta have it up because I'm gonna have it connected that way. And as for the height adjustment, you also got another latch here. In which case this having it lower will make it unlock and if you want to adjust to a certain height you could do so let's say I want to have it like this I press it it'll stay so there's a third option third function I should say you can go you can bend and then the, the last here is this Sure. Yep, if you have it pressed in, then it's, it's fixed. So pretty cool. Now to use this, okay. now to use this, I'm gonna have to detach what I put in on this stand for just the strike before and use it. They, just, they really should have given you another one. So you don't have to keep messing with it. Because after all, this is just hot plastic. Now we got the attach the strike just like before. Let's not lower this way now because I can get it in the screen easier. Just like before, you attach the quatch. You'll stand that way. Let's zoom in more. You'll attach the L striker pack directly to the strike as it's meant to be. And there you go. Now everything's in. You can do some of the nice poses with shoe up. Legs. Not gonna mess it with too much, but have the head turn. So something like that. I'm not the best poster in the world, but if I had more time, I could do so. But this video has gone long enough. Just gonna rotate it a little bit. I really like the color, it gives it a really machine-like color, everything, well it is metal on, on the legs, but the rest of the kit, the pink apps are terrific. Um, since it's painted, I figure that there might be some imperfection, but I am unable to find it. I guess I'm, I can't really see too well 
but looking at it, I don't see any imperfection, and hopefully it will stay that way. Because it doesn't come with any stickers at all, and, and for metal build you don't expect any, because this is the highest end that Bandai has for the figures. And get what you pay for, you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't need to use stickers. But I'm sure if you want to use ad additional water slide decal, you can. Because I actually like the ma Master Grade Strike decals more than, than what you see here. Let's get a closer look at the details of it. So this is right out of the box, there's no panel line, no decals, it's just straight out of the box, look. The scope is just a reflective, reflective surface, the eyes also reflective a little bit, yeah again there's no LED gimmick so this is all you can, all you will do, all is, this is the one appearance that you will always see. I find that usually Bandai does not do LEDs that much. Um, the only exceptions are um, the the Gundam Double O Quant, but other than that, the majority of the kits are not LED. Doesn't have an LED gimmick, so so that's for my review part part one and part two. I'm gonna compare with the Master Grade. Strike Gundam, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.